All right, so this is my value stage. Basically, I'm adding value to it as far as the darks and lights of the drawing. And if you take your original and then you make a copy of it, you can go onto that layer. And what I'm doing is I'm going to go here and here. So have the tool options open. This is the dodge and burn tool. And all I'm doing is getting a value for these colors. Now there's another way to do this, but I'll show you this method first. So here's burn. Burn will go and does that. But you see how it leaves a stripe behind. Okay? Even though the opacity is set all the way up. So I'm not a big fan of that method of uh, dodging and burning. But if you go over it once, what happens is you get one value higher. So after I get the one value that is higher, then I'll go back to the paint. Use control B, grab it. Shift. And then go back to the brush. So I grab that value. And once I have it, you know, I can go in here very quickly and just hash out some of this. And I work relatively quick on this. Try not to concentrate on it too much. Just blank out everything. I also like blurring my vision a lot because that way I'm forced not to look at everything at once. You tend to try to do perfect because you know your your mind wants to do perfect by nature and you just want to shut that out. Fight it. So blur your vision. It kind of forces your forces your mind to shut down a little bit and that way if you make mistakes like that it's it's not a totality thing okay again I want to get this but I want to get it one higher so I'll do that oops and sometimes it's just so much faster just to go over to the eyedropper and grab it and then go back to the brush. For big shadows, I'll do that. This might be a bigger shadow in this area. In fact, this whole thing would probably be shadow. Perfect. Now also, I like to take and say, well, this color is good, but if I want to add some of this stuff right here into the shadow, I'll do that. So I'll grab this value, maybe around in this area, and then I'll just set my opacity rather low. Let's see how that works. You can add some of the sky in with the value of the color here.
That's how it works. And at this point, you know, you can start just being a little bit more brushy and things. Go over it a couple times. And And once you start getting this blocked in phase with the shadows, you can start thinking about, you know, different things rather than, uh, you can start grabbing those mid-mid values. Like here's a mid value. Don't concentrate on blending it all together though, because really, you lose a lot of the quality there. Let's say you wanted to, to blend a little bit, like in this area. Well, there's another tool. This is the Blur Sharpen tool. And you use blur. I used to like apply jitter to it. Let me zoom in on that. That works. There's also this tool, smudge. I like to apply jitter to that too. So see how that one's blended all the way through to the point where now it doesn't have any kind of texture to it? That's what I'm talking about. Is you got to avoid that. And to avoid it, I like to take and put maybe something like a texture on here. And that way when it does smudge around, it still keeps a value of texture in there also. You can quickly see how easy it is after you rough in the color to blend some of this stuff together and still keep a nice te texture in there. See the texture? So if you make mistakes, they're not really all that bad to make. Because you can just blend them together. Okay, so once I establish all this texture and value and blend it all together, then um, I go to a different stage. So. Get to that point and I'll meet you there. The other way to build up different shades is like this. So if you take a brush and turn it to something with a texture, something like this. You would still do the method before where you would burn an area or you could do it like this. Let's say I grab this color right here. I would rank its value up, then grab my brush, set the opacity like to 16 or 17, something really low, and then go in here and start shading this. And be kind of, oh, I don't know, pecky at it. Pecky's a word.
you know, I'll try to mix in some of this color from the sky in that. And this is a perfect way to do it, too, because you're just adding value on top of it. Anytime I get too much like that, right there in that area, back off and Now if you still want to blend it, now you can use the smudge tool. Again, I would always use this tool with some kind of texture, however. And don't get too much because then it takes and starts blending it so much that it blurs all the value of texture out. But I'm going to be showing you how to get this texture back. We, we can use textures from, let's say, the internet or a camera to uh, get them back. Let's say if you made a mistake, well, that's really easy to fix. Remember, you duplicated this layer. So all this layer is is just a bunch of shade and texture. So you can always delete it back, and you can do that by just using the eraser tool. Something like that. Now by erasing it back, you'll find that sometimes you can add uh, highlights that way. But we'll get into that in the next video. For right now, just know that that's a different way to add value to it too, is just to up it using the value right here. Alright, let's move on to the next video.